Hey everybody, how are you doing today? It's Tara Green and it is the first day of summer in the Northern Hemisphere here. It is June the 20th. It is solstice or called Litha. It's an ancient pagan celebration well before time was even invented. Uh, our ancestors were always watching the sun and knew the four major gateways in the year and they celebrated them. So as the sun enters the sign of cancer, that's how we describe it in modern astrology, we go into a new season, a new quarter. So of course it's summer starting up here. It's the longest day of light. It's a very special solstice. It's rare, it hasn't happened this early in 262 years. And then there's a full moon the next day. Uh, so this solstice, the sun appears to stand still for three days. Um, and then the lunar standstill also happens tomorrow and that's every 18.6 years. So to have a double header like this, solstice where the sun stands still and the full moon stands still, it's a strawberry moon, is pretty amazing. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the astrology aspects here. You can see, of course, the sun entering zero degrees of cancer called a world point and it's water. It's the element of water. You can see, of course, Venus is connected to cancer at four degrees there and Mercury at seven. So it's a triple cancer season. Okay, now the ruler of cancer is the moon and the moon is in Sagittarius at the 15th degree down there. Um, and the 15th degree of any sign is kind of like the crest of the wave there. You'll have to excuse my fingernails. I'm deep into gardening right now. Um, the 15th degree of Sagittarius is on something called the Great Attractor, which is a super galactic anomaly. Nobody even knows what it does. It bends light. You can see around. You can see up ahead. Um, so really clue into the moon being at 15 degrees of Sag there. It's opposite Jupiter. And Jupiter is the planet that governs Sagittarius and Pisces traditionally. Jupiter is not considered strong in Gemini um, because it is opposite the sign it rules. So, but Jupiter in Gemini uh, makes things lighter and breezier and more fun. Um, in this chart set to Washington DC, the summer solstice arrives at 4.51 p.m. That's Eastern Daylight Time. And I'm gonna be doing some ceremony as I always do. My husband and I are gonna do some ceremony out in the backyard. Um, and really stop and tune into this magical day. The pagans called this Litha. They believed that it was the time when the, the fae folk, we could connect with them very easily on Midsummer Night's Dream. So the fairy queen goes out and rides around and you're supposed to put the dew on your face and leave little offerings for the fairies so they don't play nasty tricks and make your stuff disappear and stuff like that or enchant you, you know. Um, what else have we got here? Now, Mars is in Taurus. Mars is in Venus' sign. Chiron is in Aries, of course, as it's been for a while. The North Node is still in Aries at 12 degrees. If you have planets at 12 degrees of Aries, Libra, Cancer, or Capricorn, you're going to be feeling that, that pressure of that nodal shift. I have Saturn at 12 degrees Libra. So definitely it's a releasing a lot of past issues for me personally, for lots of other people as well. Um, Lilith is at the 29th degree of Virgo opposite Neptune. So this is a really interesting transit because Lilith is obviously going to leave Virgo. She's very earthy, grounded, and there she is opposite Neptune. So if Lilith has been coming into your dreams in the last while, that's really important that you tune into her. What kind of a message has she got for you? Um, pay attention to that. You know, and evoke her. She's not bad. She's not evil like people make her out to be. She's just powerful, independent, wants absolute equality, and she won't settle for anything less. So she represents the original first woman, the divine feminine. Okay. Uh, Pluto, of course, at one degree of Aquarius, still moving retrograde, and Pluto is trining Jupiter, but it's also in conjunct, which means it's 150 degrees away from the Sun, Venus, and Mercury. So Pluto in Aquarius is our riches, it's our sole purpose, it's radical, it's breaking free. So we don't want to get too disconnected from our feelings, though, our emotions. Of course, with cancer season, it's all about home and family and cooking and your stomach and what makes... Uh, life worth living you know it's all about being close to someone being close to your family whether it's your blood or other people but it really is about that sense of emotional security what do I need to feel safe and am I nurturing my inner child uh, also where you live and being with water right now is really really important doing a lot of water cleansing 
Um, Saturn is, a, is almost stationary in the sky. It will turn retrograde on the 29th. It's at 19 Pisces. It will turn retrograde at that same degree. So Saturn is very strong right now. So again, if you have any planets, uh, I would say 15 to 20 degrees of Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, or Sagittarius, there's Saturn is squaring all that. Juno, the my favorite goddess, one of my favorite goddesses, is also at 15 degrees of Virgo, and she is the goddess who June is named after, and she is the goddess of feminine genius. So really, Saturn is going to help you, and she's squaring the moon to really work with Juno as the goddess who comes through your dreams. She's the, she's known as the goddess of marriage and childbirth. Really call upon her. Um, I mean, Jupiter's in there too. So there's like lots of nice kind of access points, I would say, you know, especially with this full moon, it's very, very special celebration day. Mm, did we leave anything up there? Okay, Uranus, the planet of shock and change is in the seventh house there as well. It's up at uh, 22 degrees, I believe, 23 degrees, Taurus. And yeah, it's one of the only planets in Earth actually right now until... Well, Mars is in Taurus as well, but um, until Pluto moves back into Capricorn, there's very little planets in Earth signs except for Juno and Lilith there, so it's kind of nice to add them in. Vesta, the root word of investments, is also at zero degrees of Leo opposite Pluto, and I found that very interesting because Vesta is the root word of investments. So you have to invest from your heart. I know some people say investing is just an emotional thing. You have to be careful because you have to stay logical, which would be Pluto and Aquarius, um, but if your heart says, you know, well, gold, Leo, um, Vesta and Leo is all about investing in gold, and Pluto is all about crypto, so maybe you have to do both, let's put it that way, just to be safe, if you have money to invest, and if you want to make sure you're secure, because the debt just went over, over, over. Now, tomorrow I'm going to do a separate video on it, but there is a full moon, a uh, very special full moon, again, called a, a like a it's like a solstice. Uh, the moon is going to be in a very rare position again once every 18.6 years. But this day is important because it's a, the next quarter of the season is what we need to plan for. Or we could even look six months into the future. Where do, What do we want to accomplish between now and the winter solstice? Or you could move this into next spring and see this as a conception point because cancer is the sign of the mother. So what you conceive on Midsummer Night, with the help of the fairies, of course, um, you know, Shakespeare wrote a big play about it, is the baby that's going to be born um, at the spring equinox. So I'm inviting you to join me if you want to get a reading, you want to scope out how you want to plan, how you want to intend what's going to happen, how the magic you can create for yourself uh, over the next three months, six months, nine months. I'm here to help you. You can look at my link tree. There is links to that. You can get in touch with me at terratero.com. Again, I am going to be doing some ceremony today. So with cancer, it's all about the stomach, feeding yourself, make a really nice meal, go by the water today if you can. Do some water cleansing. Just realize that 2024 is half over already. Um, I mean, this is like strange that it's half over already, I feel, right? But it is, and so this is a turning point. You know, we're going into the home stretch. This is the peak of daylight. The sun stands still for three days, and then it will gradually returning into the feminine half of the year. We've already done the masculine half. We're going to go into the feminine half where the dark comes on more. And that's just about an absolute balance. You know, we can't have one without the other. So, want to wish you all the best blessings. Again, this is a very rare early solstice and that special full moon. There's actually going to be two full moons in Capricorn, one after the other, but in different months. So, yeah, pay attention to your own chart. Look for this. Look at how these asteroid goddesses are affecting you as well. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm glad to be at your service. You can get in touch with me at terratero.com.